Thank you for coming, guys. My name is George, and today I'm going to present and talk about the recommendation system which we recently built on one of our projects. Um, so a few words about me. I am a big data engineer in Green Dynamics company. I am like Scala, and I love Spark framework, and luckily we've got a lot of related projects, so I have an opportunity to use that on production and a lot. And last two years, I'm working with recommendations as a data engineer for one retail company, and I want to share some experience. Okay. Um, Just a few comments that that I, I, I have a pretty straightforward material, so it should be pretty understandable. And the second thing that I would present the problem from engineering perspective. So I, I'm going to omit some data scientist aspects just because I'm not a data scientist. So anyway, this is our plan. So for the beginning, I'm going to overview some popular recommendating recommendation systems on the market. Then we will um, create the model which solve recommendation problem. And then I show you how we use the model in production and also show some demo. Okay, so I want to start with a little piece of motivation. Why do we talk about recommendation systems at all? So what's the matter? And the answer is a little bit cynical, but it's all about the money. People surprisingly bad in making choices. They don't know what we want until we until they saw it. And by providing some personalized recommendations, company may significantly sig significantly increase their revenue. And that's why recommender systems become a pretty important business domain in the last decade. Um, moreover, recommendation systems are extremely widespread and take a part of our everyday life. And I want to show you a few examples of the systems which I often interact with. So let's start with a music domain. There are a few streaming services on the market right now such as Spotify, YouTube Music, Apple Music, and some others. But speaking about recommendations, Spotify probably is the most advanced. And especially the playlist called Discovery Weekly, which is generate 30 new tracks every Monday for each user. And I'm a big fan of it. There are some information in the internet about the implementation of Discovery Weekly. So long story short, that's just a collaboration of three uh, different machine learning models. So the first model analyzes user behavior and feedback. So take a look at the picture. There are two persons with the same um, taste. So we can recommend something to each other. And this is the main idea of the first model. So the second model analyzes song text with uh, natural language processing technique. And the third model analyzes raw audio with neural networks. So this is approximately how it looks like according to the information from the internet. So um, we've got a recommendation pipeline here which interacts with three models and involve different uh, data sources and even Kafka with some real-time information, I guess. But our main interest now is batch CF model, which uses play logs and track metadata, because play logs, this is exactly what we call user feedback. So anyway, I don't know why all these tweets about comparing Discovery Weekly with a boyfriend, but it looks like People just go crazy for it. It's it's very popular. Okay, so the next example. It's uh, game distribution services such as, for example, Steam. Unfortunately, there is no much information on the internet about how Steam recommendation system is implemented. Just one blog post from 2017, and it says that Steam uses uh, two different approaches. So the first approach analyze user behavior and feedback, and the second, analyze the information provided by game developers. And it's pretty enjoying how Steam 
explain why the stuff was recommended. So it sounds like, don't be mad on me, I recommend that for some reasons, and there are these reasons. I mean, it, it's cool. Okay, so let's move on. The next example is YouTube. Um, I'm kind of ashamed to put here my personal YouTube recommendation, so that's just a random image from the internet. So when I'm think thinking about the YouTube recommendations algorithm, something like this really comes to mind because it seems pretty random sometimes, and luckily I'm not the only one who thinks so. I pretty common needs the comments like this. People just got frustrated why this is recommended and why like this disposito again. But I think that building recommendation systems as YouTube is quite complicated task because you've got a million of users and billions of videos and and actually Google um, posted a paper on the internet with explanation how recommendation system works. So in a nutshell, this is a collaboration of two neural networks based on TensorFlow. So the first network called Candidate Generation, it analyzes user behavior and feedback, and it uh, provides hundreds of candidates for a second uh, network called Ranking. So. Ranking uses some additional information about videos and finally computes the actual results which users see on its screen. And yeah, it, it looks like pretty complicated system. Okay, so the next example is Netflix. Netflix recommendation system is, isn't like the single algorithm, but rather a set of different models which serving different use cases such as personalization, because you watch, trending now, popular now, continue watching, and so on. So there is something in common between all these examples, one way or another, but all of them uses, I mean, analyzes user behavior and feedback. And this kind of recommendation systems called collaborative filtering. And collaborative filtering includes two types of recommendations. So the first type called personalized recommendations. So what does Netflix know about me? Just my likes, dislikes, what I was watching, <coughs> which movies I added to my list. But still, using this information, Netflix able to provide um, personal recommendations that works exclu exclusively for me. And the second type is similar items or what called on Netflix because you watched. Using the same information, Netflix can analyze how similar different movies make impression on user feedback. So this kind of similarity between movies. And these two types of recommendations, this is pretty similar to what we have built on our project. And now I show you the, the model. Uh, just for better understanding, I will use movies domain instead of um, retail. So there are actually a few types of recommendations and collaborative filtering just one of them. There is also content-based systems which analyze discrete attributes and features of the product. But in reality, systems are more complicated than just collaborative filtering or content-based and they, they have to use uh, different approaches together, and this is kind of systems called hybrid. But in my talk, I will consider only collaborative filtering and the particular idea of implementation called matrix factorization. So anyway, what is collaborative filtering exactly? We have our users, products, and feedback, and we want to provide two types of recommendations by user and by item. And the feedback itself can be two types. Explicit, that means user tells us his preferences directly. And implicit means that we make an assumption based on some information that we have. For example, what user purchased, what user added 
to bag or like how many times users spend on some page and, and, and so on. And in reality, implicit feedback is more widespread because it's kind of complicated to get explicit feedback. People don't like to leave it so. And in general, collaborative filtering problems solved by construction user item metrics, which looks this way. So we have our products, users, and ratings, which we know. So now we can define a problem. If somehow we would able to estimate the empty cells, we would able to provide a good recommendation. So something like this. In this scenario, our recommendations would be a higher value and in estimated cells. Oh, sorry. And the problem of user item metrics that is just too sparse. In reality, we may have millions of users and millions of items, and only low number of users provide feedback on a few products. And it's just too complicated to do math with this representation, and that's why many ideas and approaches try to evolve to some dense representation instead of. And matrix factorization is one of these approaches. So the idea itself is pretty simple. We want to uh, represent a, a, a big single matrix as a multiplication of two lower matrices. So in order to do that, we have to introduce new variable call, called factor. So this is a, an example how we combine four to four matrix as, multi for, uh, as multiplication of two matrices, four by two and two by four. And I want to explain the um, factor idea on particular example. So if, for ex if we define factors as a movie genres, we can, we, we can create two matrices, one for users and one for items. And item matrix shows how each mover corresponds to the each genre. And the user matrix shows how much user loves each genre. And for example, Pirates of Caribbean might be a good action, adventure, and a fantasy, but probably not so good as a family film. And we probably want to recommend it to the Stacy because she likes actions and fantasies, or for example, to John because he likes action and adventure. But we def definitely would not recommend it to Rob who um, likes families films. But so this is the basic idea how it works. So eventually, using this approach, we can um, re reconstruct any empty cell from initial user item metrics. So for example, if we want to find out and answer how Stacy would like product C, we just need to make a multiplication of vector of uh, Stacy from user metrics and vector of product C from the item metrics. And that's it. So now we've got two questions. So how we would define factors in our production system and how we would make factorization? Because we can um, hire 100 analysts who would do that for us, but this is just like too expensive. And luckily, there is algorithm called alternating least squares, which do exactly this job. So we just need to provide number of factors, and it would will have like factorization for us. So I want to leave technical details behind, but but in a nutshell, we just construct lost function by ratings which we know, and then iteratively minimize it. And important detail here that the factors provided by ALS, they have no interpretation or representation or like explanation. So that's just a number, some mathematical abstraction. So don't try to understand it, you will fail. Okay, uh, yes. So this is a high level architecture of our application. We've got a model, which is just two matrices. And we've got two pipelines here. So the training pipeline that's a process of getting model from input data. And the serving, that's a process of getting particular recommendations from a model. 
So in order to provide any recommendations, we need to implement two mathematical operations. So um, if you want to get recommendations for a user, we, find we, we have to find user vector from user matrices. If we matrix, I mean, and if you want to provide recommendations by a item, we need to find an item vector from item matrix. So then we need to multiply the vector by the whole item matrix uh, because we, we want to understand how user or item correspond to any other items. And after that, we want to get like top 10 values from the result of multiplication because from business perspective, you don't need a lot of recommendations, just like 10, 5, or 15 would be enough. Okay. So now let's consider implementation how we did it. Uh, before that, we actually need to think about the requirements, and there are a few important aspects. So the first one is how much data do we actually have? So this is our references point. We have around nine millions of users and two hundred thousands of items and we've got implicit feedback uh, which takes about 50 gigabytes and it updates every day so we want to rebuild our model on a daily basis the next aspect is performance so we want to uh, train our model within three hours and we want to have recommendations so doing this two mathematical operations within uh, 100 milliseconds. So why it's important to have a good performance? Because in reality, we might have a chain of different models. So just let's consider the scenario that for some reason, ALS is not able to provide any recommendations. In, in that case, we will translate the request to the second model which which would try to handle it and it's if it's also failed to handle it eventually it would go to some very generic model for example like popular now that kind of model can provide recommendations for any item and any users it, it would not be personalized but anyway it's better to show anything that um, return nothing. So each model should have a pretty good performance, otherwise uh, UI would be awaiting for for a long time. Okay, so another aspect that problems such as ALS pretty often solved by pre-calculation approach. So since our model is just two matrices, we can completely multiply it during training uh, do all this math and get recommendations by, by for for all items and for all users, and then cache it in some key value storage, and that's it. In we will we will have a really cool performance. But actually, we don't want to use this approach uh, for two reasons. So the first reason, um, let's consider an example that we building recommendation system for some department store. Where might be some additional business rules such as for example i want five brands to be presented across recommendation set or i want all recommendations be within one category for example i want to see only dresses or shoes or hats in recommendations and these business rules make the pre-computation completely useless and another point here that th this is one of the main advantages of the als algorithm because it supports online learning. So instead of rebuild model on, on a daily basis, we can implement some kind of streaming and ingest new data and update our model in near real time. Um, unfortunately, we didn't, we didn't implement this uh, yet, but like this is our plans for the next year. I mean, for this year. Anyway, ALS is quite popular algorithm, there are a lot of implementations on different languages, machine learning frameworks. And one of the most uh, inter uh, popular implementations in Spark MLib framework. Okay, so this is approximately how it looks like our training pipeline. So 
We've got a three stages here, the ETL, the training itself, and preparation. All these stages implemented as uh, Spark applications, and there are also some. Um, after each stage, we save the data on HDFS or Google Bucket. So let me sh explain the meaning of all these stages. So why do we need um, ETL? And in this stage, we want to clear the data. We want to filter out the information which can hurt our model. For example, we want to filter out the users which has just two less information. Or again, if we are making a rec uh, recommendation system for a department store, there might be a smaller retailers which can you know, um, just buy everything in our system and then try to sell it on their side. This kind of information this hurt our model and we want to filter out. Also on this stage, we try to handle cold start problem. Uh, this problem appears when you got new uh, products in a catalog and there is just no information to provide any rec recommendations for them. Uh, that's not a cool way to handle it, but we just filter out such products and we hope that the next model can provide something for them. Okay, so the next stage, the training model itself, and I, I want to show you the main parameters of the Spark implementation or how to use it. So we just need to define known blocks. This is a parallelization level. So we want to split our model on some blocks and handle them in uh, some parallel parallel manner. The next parameter, rank, this is just a number of factors. And max iteration, this is how much iteration ALS algorithm should do to minimize the cost function. So rank and max iteration, they, this is kind of um, compromise between accuracy and performance. So we can define more factors and more iteration, so we will improve accuracy. But we need more power to handle it. The next rec param, this is a regu regularization. So how big, how much like numbers should be in our model? Would it be m millions or it would be just a small numbers between zero and one? So that's a re regularization. And final parameter, we would define like what our input data is that implicit feedback or explicit feedback and that's it and after that the preparation stage so once we train our model how we supposed to get good performance so we decided to put user metrics as a key value into h base or big table and the item metrics we just store in application memory as Java object because we need the whole metrics to provide any recommendations for any item or any user and that's just too expensive to store it in any storage. Uh, this is how much time it takes. So w we can uh, play around with ALS parameters and makes the training time more or less like, okay. Uh, let's move on and now let's consider serving. So the main feature of our serving is usage of Breeze library. That's pretty popular library that's a wrapper for a native library called Bless. And this library used by Spark itself for some mathematical operations. Um, uh, this is uh, benchmarks made by GMH. So in our scenario for 200,000 products and 50 factors, we make multiplication just in seven milliseconds and multiplication and get top key in 70 milliseconds. That means we have some space here. For example, we can imp uh, increase the number of factors because 70 is like much less that, than 100, which is our requirement. But anyway, this is how the heart of our application looks like, the object called scorer. So 
this method top key is responsible for uh, recommendations calculation and it takes a vector so that would be like user vector or item vector and number of recommendations which we want to return and this is our recommendation so recommendations that just a product id and a score so in order to get recommendations we need to multiply the matrix by a vector so that's a breeze objects and after that just get top and elements from the multiplication result um, i think that arctop key probably works with data structure called heap so it returns um, ele unsorted elements and we we want to sort it to to show more relevant okay um, this is a schema of our serving so we have a web server and this is how query looks like so this is like user id and number of recommendations and we just need to go to the storage to get the vector by user id and then call the scorer object and that's it the same situation for item uh, but we don't need to go anywhere because the item vector already inside scorer okay anyway um, now I, I want to show you how we can implement, for example, like business rules based on this architecture. So what if we want like to have at least five different categories to be presented in recommendations or otherwise like just all recommendations within one category. So in this scenario, we want to split the item metrics into smaller matrices grouped by a category so all the products within same category would be grouped into the same matrix and in that scenario each category or each group will have its own scorer object so now we have a query like this so that a list of categories that should be involved in recommendations and this is like number of products per each category and we just have an iteration across categories and call the scorer object from each category and then combine the results together. So like, pretty simple. Anyway, this is our technology landscape. So all the model is um, implemented by Scala or in rare occasions with Python and we use Akai HTTP for um, web part from infrastructure perspective we use google cloud and we have kubernetes cluster so all the model is shipped as uh, docker containers and we also use argo pipelines for some synchronization um okay so that's that's it what i was wanted to uh, tell but now i want to show a, a demo how it looks like for a demo, I took a free data from MovieLens. That's um, analysis which were collecting dates from 1996 to 2018, and it has 600 users and 10,000 movies. Yeah, and each user has at least uh, 20 ratings. OK, so let me show you. Okay, I, I have a few examples here already. So let's see the user which ID is. Now. I, I, is it looks fine? Can you see it? Yep. Not 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 so good. Okay. Better. Okay, let's let let's try to do this. So. We have our user with ID 9, and this is a history of the user, but i showing just the movies which user actually likes. So that's a five 
with 5 rating or 4.5, so like user like this. So we can see here Indiana Jones, Back to Future, Lord of the Rings, and all that stuff. And this is how recommendations looks like for this user. And it's pretty remarkable that we see here Lord of the Rings and Indiana Jones because from uh, algorithm actually doesn't know this, these films are related. It doesn't know that Lord of the Rings is the same series. For, for the algorithm, that's completely different. And that means basically that users tend to uh, to put the same ratings for each movie from a series. So if if people like Lord of the Rings, it like all three movies. Or if it like hate hates Lord of the Rings, it hates the same like all the movies. And the next example, like some user two four four, where it's like Heat, Braveheart, Maverick, Forrest Gump, and some other films. And this is how recommendations looks like. It's not always reasonable, but sometimes you can understand, and sometimes it, like, there is no explanation why it looks this way. And this is how similar items looks like. So this is uh, the Hop, some animation movie, and it it tends to recommend animations movie for the animation. So. It makes sense, I guess. And the recommendations for Interstellar. I mean, Interstellar is about the space, and there is like some other space movies like Star Wars. And anyway, um, there is opportunity to see the results for a pretty random user, for example. Does it work? Yeah. So some random user. This is his history and this is how recommendations looks like again the rock star wars forest gump and well anyway how much time do i have Ten minutes, okay. um Okay, let's let's try to play a game. I I, I have some price here, but um, you you need to imagine that you are like ALS algorithm. I would show you a history of a random user, and you just need to guess the any film from recommendations, and the person who will guess the most relevant movie would get a prize. Okay, well, we we have time anyway. Okay, so let me show you a history of uh, random user. Mm, okay, there is only four films that it user likes. It's a uh, Wolf from Wall Street, Spider-Man, and Deathgasm. I I don't know. I didn't. Look. Okay, let's try another user. Okay, let, let's try this user. We've got Shawshank Redemption, Shindra List, Li Lion King, Matrix, Green Mile. Yeah, it should be achievable. So you, you can just like guess any variant. Uh, and please do remember your guess. So anyone, please. Just any, any guess. Which one? Uh, Green Mile already already here in the his. Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Okay. Any other guess? The, the okay. The Shining. Uh, Godfather. Okay. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the. Uh, that's you are cheater. <laughs> because it's already here. Well. Okay. So okay. Let's 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 try see the results now. Um, Brave, Star Wars, no? <laughs> okay, that was complicated. 
<laughs> Let, let's try again. We, we have time still. It, it tends to recommend some popular movies from ImageDB top or Kinopoisk top. So, okay. Let's try this guy. They have Star Wars, Shawshank Redemption, Godfather, Toy Story, Forrest Gump, Casablanca, Citizen Kane, uh, Mary Poppins. Okay, any guesses? There is no Green Mile. Okay, Green Mile. Okay, any other guesses? Lord of the Rings, you are cheating. Okay, scary movie. scary movie. Okay, okay, okay. Let's try. Let's try. Brave. Uh, Toy Story again. Frozen. Avengers. Life is beautiful. Uh, does anyone have? No. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to be BLS. Okay, <laughs> let, 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 let the final try. We we can make it. Okay, that seems to be complicated. Let's try other user. <laughs> uh, no. Die Hard, Superman, Star Trek, Harry. P yeah, we can do this. Yeah. So what we have here, the Die Hard, Back to the Future, Shrek, Superman, uh, Star Trek, Spider-Man, Jumanji, Aliens, Top Gun, Independence Day. So any guesses? So Interstellar. Uh, what? Interstellar. Interstellar, OK. Uh, any other guess? Peter Pan. OK. <laughs> Why not? OK, that's it? Matt? You are a cheater. Okay. Star Wars, yeah, Harry Potter. Uh, who was told the Star Wars? The okay, we, we've got a winner. Um, I, I've uh, who, who was the first? O okay, I, I've got just only one prize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you. So that's it, basically. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I think we have a time for questions. So are there any questions? Uh, thanks for your talk. I have a question. Uh, basically, your algorithm implies that you do not count uh, other users when you uh, make a prediction for uh, a particular user. So you don't have a algorithm like this user likes these films, that probably you also will like films like uh, another user will like. Yeah. So that's this this information. Uh, I'll show you. This information took into account by ALS algorithm. So we don't use this directly by algorithm use, use that in order to make factorization. Just because computers see something which people do not see. And uh, that's just like ALS is like a one model, but we have some other models as well which use another type of algorithms and other structures and, and other information. Um, any other questions? Okay, it's it's lunch time, so <laughs> let's finish. Thank you.